here we have the third work application that we're gonna see and the last one that's pumping work in the last application we talked about lifting a chain and pumping is gonna be very similar because we're essentially lifting water now it's really what pumping it is is lifting it up out of whatever container it's in now water is pretty heavy and I have a note here that water weighs just over 60 pounds per cubic foot 62.5 you don't need to memorize that. If you need it at any point, I will give you that value, or you can look it up here. In metric, if you're dealing with metric units, if you see meters, for instance, on the measurement, the density of water in metric units is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Now notice that density and weight are not the same thing. The weight is going to be that density times the gravitational constant, 9.8. So that turns out to be 9,800 newtons per cubic meter. Those two values are just constants, the 62.5 or 9,800, and you'll see those depending on which unit of measurement we're using. But again, no need to memorize those or anything. You can always refer to them here, or they'll be given to you in the problem. So we have this tank that's a cylinder, and it's five feet tall. Four feet of that is filled with water. It's 12 feet in radius, so 24 feet in diameter, and we're looking to pump all of the water out over the side of this tank. So we have to lift it up and out. Now if you think about this, like with the 200 pound chain that we lifted to the top of the building, it's the same principle here, that some of the water needs to be lifted a different distance than the rest of it. The top layer of water only needs to be lifted one foot while the bottom layer of water needs to be lifted five feet all the way to the top of the tank. So because of that, we can't just multiply force and distance and be done. We need to use an integral. But we'll approach the problem in the same way. We'll think about slicing it and figuring out the work needed to lift one slice. So what we'll do is we'll think about for each slice, what's the force on that slice, meaning what's the weight of that slice, we we'll need to do a little bit of geometry to find the weight. And then we'll think about what's the distance that slice needs to be lifted. That's going to be relatively easy, just like it was with the chain, as long as we pick our coordinate system carefully. And we'll come back to that in just a second. Once we find these two, we can multiply them to get the work needed to lift one individual slice. Then we can think about how, as you add those up, and let the thickness of a slice drop to zero, then that turns into an integral, and the total work will be the integral of these force and distance pieces. So in practice, what's gonna happen is we're gonna calculate force, and it will involve x and maybe a delta x. We're gonna calculate distance, it'll involve x as well, and we'll take those two expressions with x and multiply them together, inside an integral and the delta x will turn into dx. So the details of how it works out is very similar to what we did with lifting that chain, but the details are where all the messy stuff happens. So coming back to the beginning here where we need to calculate the weight and the distance of one slice. If we're going to do this, we need to start by thinking about where our slice will be. And again, the slice will be somewhere between the top of the water and the bottom of the water. Wherever it is, we're going to call x. And we just need to think about what our coordinate system will look like. Just like in the lifting problem, we're gonna measure x up and down because we're moving things up and down. We're moving things vertically, so our coordinate system will be oriented vertically. And we'll use x for all of these problems, but you could use y and it wouldn't change anything. We're just going to stay with x to be consistent. Looking at this problem then, we need to think about where our zero point is going to be, where the start of our coordinate system will be placed. There are kind of three natural places to put it. We could put it at the top of the tank and measure downward. That's one option. We could put it at the top of the water and measure downward. Or we could put it at the bottom of the tank and measure upward. It turns out you could place it anywhere you wanted. You could put it 10 feet above the top of the tank and you could still work it out just like we will here. 
But the three most natural places would be the top and bottom of the tank and then the top of the water level. Any one of these three will work just fine as long as you're careful and consistent. The most that will change is that distance will need to adjust based on which one you pick and then your limits of integration will adjust accordingly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the top of the tank and again I like to do that to stay consistent. There are times where picking the top of the water might make some of the algebra a little simpler, but for our purposes the top of the tank usually works pretty well. So if you want to just stick with one for all these problems, you can try that. I'll try to shift around in order to give you practice with different ones. And after we've done the problem, maybe we'll come back and think about what would have changed if we placed the coordinate system at one of the other places. So we're starting at the top of the tank and measuring downward with x. So wherever we take a slice, the location will be x. It will be x feet below the top rim of this tank. At the top of the water, for instance, x would be 1. At the bottom of the tank, x would be 5, and so on. So the distance, we'll figure out when we need to. Let's back up a little bit and think about the force or the weight of one slice. And I've drawn a slice here. Just to remind you, the radius of this slice is 12 feet. The thickness is delta x. The thickness of our slices will always be delta x. And to find the weight of this slice, that force, that weight, is going to depend on its volume. With English units, it'll be 62.5 pounds per cubic foot times its volume, which is why I gave you that unit weight up above. Just like with the problem lifting the chain, we had a unit weight and then we had a small unit and we multiply them together to get the weight. Here our unit is this volume of a disk that we need to deal with and then we multiply by 62.5. If we were dealing with metric units, we would take the volume and multiply by 9800 as is shown at the top of the screen. So in either case, the weight will be the unit weight times the volume of the slice. And that's going to be true for all of these pumping problems. And it really just changes from one to the next what the geometry looks like. So let's we'll do a little bit of geometry to find the volume of this disk. But then for other ones, the disks might be shaped like rectangles or something else that we'll have to figure out the volume in that case. So really this problem now focuses on a volume problem, finding the volume of a disk. It's circular, so its volume will just be the area of that circle times the thickness delta x. So this will be 62.5 times pi r squared delta x. And to think about this, think about how we calculate the volume of a box, for instance. The volume of a three-dimensional box. Since the sides of the box rise up perpendicular to the floor, that's what we call a right object, so like a right circular cylinder would be the one that we have drawn here, because the sides rise up perpendicular to the base. They're sort of straight, flat sides. If there's any figure that looks like that, the volume is just the area of the base times the height. So for instance, you could have a triangular base, and the volume of that thing would be the area of that triangle times its height. For any object like that, you can use that principle. Ours is circular, so we can find the area of the circle, which is pi r squared, times the height or the thickness delta x. Now in our case, r is really simple. It's just 12. And it's 12 no matter where x is. No matter where you look on the picture, the radius of all the slices will be 12. In another example, we're going to do one where we have a cone as our tank. And in that case, the slices are still circular, but the radius changes as x changes. So we'll have to find out a way to represent that difference that change in radius as x changes. But we'll get to that later on. For now, we'll stay with this example where radius is just 12. So 
we have 62.5 times pi times 12 squared delta x, which works out to 9,000 pi delta x, simplifying a little bit. So the force, the weight of one slice, once you know what you're looking for, is just the unit weight times the volume. The volume in this case was relatively simple because they were circular and the radius wasn't changing. So the force works out to just be 9,000 pi times delta x. The distance for that one slice, coming back to the picture, wherever we cut our slice is listed as position x. So in other words, a slice at the top of the water, x would equal 1, a slice at the bottom of the water, x would equal 5. And because we've chosen the top of the tank as our value of x, the distance that it needs to be lifted will just be x, because we're just coming back to that origin. So wherever the slice is, it just needs to be lifted x feet to come back to the top of the tank. So if you choose the top of the tank, or wherever the water is being pumped to as your origin, the distance will just be x, and it's just that simple. So then the work will be force times distance, 9,000 pi times x, and instead of delta x, we put this in an integral with dx. All we need to finish our integral is limits of integration, so again, we come back to the problem and think about what values of x are related to the beginning and the end of the problem. In other words, where are we starting and stopping this process of pumping water? The water starts when x equals 1, and the water stops when x equals 5. So those are our limits of integration. So all you have to think about is what are the values of x at the top and bottom of the water, and then the first number is the lower limit, the second number is the upper limit. Of course, those are always in order in these applications. Integrating is relatively straightforward. 9,000 pi is just a constant. So when we integrate, we get 4,500 pi times x squared, evaluated from 1 to 5. So that would be 4,500 pi times 5 squared minus 1 squared which works out to 108,000 pi pound feet. Which sounds like a lot of work, and it is, because water is pretty heavy and this tank is quite large. So there's our answer for the total work needed to pump the water up over the edge. Pay special attention to the steps we took, because as we do other pumping problems, what's going to change is the geometry of the tank to where the slices will not necessarily have a constant cross-sectional area. That area will change, and we'll actually use some of the stuff we've done when we were studying areas and volumes. Some of those principles will be helpful as we figure out how to arrange the force and distance in terms of x, specifically the force as we look at the volume of the slice. But the general process for all of these is going to be take a slice, it's always sliced the same way, with delta x being a small vertical distance. And then you find the work based on the force and distance needed to lift that slice. And then those go into the integral at the end. Now briefly, I want to think about what if we went back to the beginning of the problem and we set up our origin at the bottom of the tank? What if we measured x from the bottom up? What would that change? It wouldn't change anything on the force because the volume doesn't involve x, so that doesn't change at all. The only thing that would change is that the distance, instead of being x, would now be 5 minus x, and the limits of integration would be from 0 to 4 because x equals 0 at the bottom and x equals 4 at the top of the water. If you do that, if you work out that problem where you integrate using 5 minus x instead of x, and your limits of integration go from 1 to 4, you'll find that you get the same number at the end. Which makes sense because the work hasn't changed just because we've changed our way of looking at it. Similarly, if you started at the top of the water and measured downward, your limits of integration would still be 0 to 4 because the top of the water would be when x equals 0, 
the bottom would be when x equals 4. And now, think carefully about the distance that the water would need to be lifted. If there's a slice here at position x, lifting it x feet would bring it back to this position, and then you would need an extra foot to bring it back to the top of the tank. So in that case, distance would be x plus 1, and the limits would be from 0 to 4. So you can practice those if you like. I won't write those down, but you can try writing down the problem with those values based on the origin being in different places and make sure you get the same answer. Again, in some cases the geometry will be such that one of them might be a little bit easier to work with than the others and we'll try to pick the easiest one in each case. But the final answer does not change depending on where you pick different places for your origin to be.